I'll give you a little rundown of the truck, what you know, what it is front to back. Uh, we'll start with everything outside, and then I'm gonna get up in there, and we'll kind of go over thing underneath the truck, give you an idea of what we're working with. There's nothing top secret on this thing. Yeah, that's kind of what the under the skin looks like of this thing. There, that is where we've been. That's kind of the story of the gap train and, and how it's progressed over the first year that we've had it and where we started at and kind of ended at. It did really good this year. I mean, obviously we went some rounds and some races, especially towards the end of the year when we started to figure a few things out chassis wise, kind of got uh, the motor to do what we wanted to get the boost where we needed it to be. Going back to first gear leave was a big deal on it too. Once the chassis worked, then we didn't have to hit it so hard to get the 60 foot out. But now we need to make some more changes, you know, especially the biggest struggle I had all year long you know, which everybody kind of expects a little bit is with the turbo all the way back there and a little 5.3 and something that's as big as that 91, getting that thing to light up the way we want it to at low RPM is sometimes tough. You know, when we're going, we're leaving the line a lot of times at under 4,000 RPM and we're trying to leave on six or eight pounds of boost. It, it can be a real struggle to get it to do that a lot of times and consistently sometimes if the air is really good it's not a problem but if when the air is thick and heavy like we're at rocky mountain race week even leaving at 4500 can be tough up at elevation <laughs> This year the big focus was, or for next year the big focus is, to get that thing to light better, quicker, and do exactly what I tell it to do, and not just be this lazy guy that comes in after 60 foot or 80 foot. So we were gonna do twins. That was kind of what we talked about all year. Kind of wanted to put twin 72, 75s on it, but with Uncle Sam this, this year coming in, you know, we got that car, Nick's got a ton of work to do it. We're slammed at the shop. Doing twins on the truck right now just isn't going to be, it just isn't in the cards for us, which is not a problem. I mean, it really, this thing doesn't make a ton of power, but it does make enough power that it is competitive, um, especially if we can trim a little weight and get that turbo to work like we want it to, it'll it'll be a lot better. Which brings us to what we're doing this year, It's which is we're ditching the 85, we're ditching the intercooler, which sucks because I know one of the, one of the things that people really kind of like like about the truck or think that's neat, the cool thing about it, and it is an awesome touch, is the intercooler and how it's painted like the grill. So it's really badass. I'm gonna miss that part of it, that it, it just really looks neat. It's it's like a, a kind of a trademark of the truck when you see it. There's been some really funny like TikTok videos out there too of you know pointing at it, saying they're trying to hide the intercooler and, and stuff. So it's a bummer that's gonna go away. Um, but that's gonna drop like probably, I don't know, I haven't weighed this thing. I'm gonna guess it's, 30 pounds off the nose of the truck, which is a big deal because the goal is hopefully to get this thing's overall weight down. It's 3,600, a little over 3,600 with me in it, like it sits right now race weight. That's heavy. That's probably at least 150 to 200 pounds heavier than most of the other backtrack cars. Many of them anyways that are competitive. I mean, there's some guys lighter, but we're heavier than, than many of the competitive cars. So if we can just get rid of a little bit of weight, that's gonna help us out a bunch, I think. So she's gone also getting a fiberglass front bumper, which again, the awesome duct tape touch that Mick did on that, but it's heavy and it's gotta go. So we got Featherlight, ordered a front bumper for it. We got a different grill that's gonna go with that. Ron Rhodes core support, which we don't have a lot left of this core support anyways. Um, you know, there's not a lot there with no radiator. It's pretty trimmed out in this section, but we're still heavy there. That's all gonna go away. It's gonna save probably another 20 pounds, I think it is maybe, or 10, 15, something like that. So we're already, there's 40 pounds off. The bumper and brackets should save us, they, I think they said 15 pounds. So now we're, you know, we're getting 50, 60 pounds. The hood, she's gotta go. Now, I, I like the hood because it's got our, our symbol on it, our, our big logo, and it's something we did, and I'm gonna miss that too, but, um, I think that, that six inch or it's a four inch, I don't know, some bubble hood from Featherlight. I think it's a four inch Featherlight bubble hood is gonna look freaking badass on here. Definitely look cooler than the stock hood. Just won't have, um, you know, it won't be the thing that started with the big sticker and stuff, but we'll probably still put, I'm sure we'll put our Mac logo on it. Um, it's gonna be a pin on style. So, you know, they were gonna drop probably another 
There's another probably 20 pounds. So now we're like probably pushing 80 pounds off the front of the truck to get rid of. So that's a big deal on how it's gonna affect what I gotta put weight wise in the back. The other changes we're gonna make, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fenders off. This fender is pretty gutted out. There's not a whole lot in here that's still left. That one though, it's still got some, it's got plenty of structure, like all the structure in it. Pull those, gone. Get rid of all the inner structure. Like I should be able to take maybe five to eight pounds combined out of both of them. And there's some more weight. So now we're getting close to hundred pounds off the front end. We were going to do the tubular style front like horns and stuff on the truck but i think i'm going to wait for now and kind of just take a, a few little steps you know with that much more weight off the front this thing already is at the point where it almost skips a tire when it's really working well and to pull 80 pounds off the nose we're going to get rid of the bias out back obviously too or the weight to kind of bring it back where we want it but not knowing how it's going to act um and not really being tested going into the first race, which is cash out in February at the end of the month. Uh, I think we're just gonna take a step first, do these things, so, you know, so that when we get rid of, part of it, when we get rid of the uh, the 85, the intercooler, I'm gonna swap, get rid of old reliable stock uh, throttle body, and I think I'm gonna put my 102 on it, or that's a 90, it might be a 92, one or the other, whatever it is. And then we'll pretty much just connect, you know, we're gonna come down here still, I don't know if we're gonna, where we're gonna do it at, if we're gonna just go ahead and still come there and up to here, I don't know, we'll figure it out once we get to it, but that's where that's gonna go. I'm gonna keep the two tens, that's the goal I think we talked about in the other video. Keep the two tens and try to make them work with a bunch of base pressure just because that intake doesn't weigh anything and to put on a 16 injector intake, either A is gonna cost a bunch of money I don't have, or B I gotta use like my low ram that weighs probably 35 pounds compared to 10 pounds. And, if the goal is to take weight off the front, I don't want to put any more back up here. Um, and part of the thing with, I'll show you in a second, we're gonna go back to look at the fuel tank. I really fought with it for a while over using a regular belt drive pump or a cable drive option. Both of those would make my 210s work like no issues. There's guys out there who do it all day long, but you have to run a base pressure of you know, 100 PSI or more um, to make them work beautifully and, and be like plenty of uh, some window of duty cycle above. Um, the problem is with two, with a belt drive, either I gotta have a cable to drive it out, to drive the pump out back, which you can't get cable drive cables right now at all. And there's there's not a lot of room in this S10, it's tight. All there is is hot and everything else back there. I really didn't wanna fight that battle with the pump in the back and the cable drive. It does work for plenty of guys. I just, I just didn't wanna deal with it. The other choice is to do a true belt drive. Then you have to put a pump, a tank up here, either a tank, that's the, the main tank, three gallon or four gallon tank, whatever, or you have to do a, a pump and a surge tank kind of situation. Either one just means that the weight I took off the front, I'm gonna put half of it back on. And then the cost of that pump is, you know, to do that setup is $2,500 plus and just really isn't in the budget for this year for me. So uh, that's why we decided to do the two tens, and then if you'll come with me, we'll go back here and I'll show you what we got for a pump. You know, Aeromotive, Aeromotive really like knocked it out of the park with these 10 GPMs. And in, in reality, we're going to be using this not how they want you to use it. We're going to be pushing it past its limits of how it should be used. We're gonna give it a try because it's, it's the only real good option I have to make this work. And, it worked out good that I already had this big ass tank back here and it's 20 gallons and I could put methanol on it and still go 70 miles with it probably or 60. But um, I think we'll, we're really gonna, if we go long, when we go to Rocky Mountain or we go to Sick Week with it, if we do that, whatever, we're probably gonna use gasoline or E85 in it and still go a whole lot of miles. But this is basically the pump. It is really cool. The way it works is you have this pickup tube, I guess. I don't know, I've never really taken it out of the box yet. Let's see. Doing official unboxing here. Yeah. So you have that tube and that screen, which doing this also saves you like 250 bucks on a pre-filter because they're expensive. It's got a really nice filter screen there. This will mount, drill a hole, this will mount in here, drop that bad boy down. Now you have a really nice in-tank pump. It's gonna stay cool, which should help it last longer too, which is a good thing. Um, so yeah, that's like that whole deal there. This pump is maybe, eh, I think it retails for like 1,800, 2,000 bucks, something like that. Um, 
we can get you a little bit better deal if you want to, if you give us a call Mid America Customs. But you know that's that's a lot better and a, to me going to be a lot more reliable setup than having to do a belt drive or a, a really long cable drive option for the truck. And luckily for me, I'm at a power level where um, this is going to all work where it's going to be close to maxed out, but um, it should work. Now, guys that are making way more power than me, this thing probably only makes 1500 motor at the most, maybe 14 or 15. You know, obviously, if I was making 1800, not going to work too much horsepower for this setup, but we might have just squeaked it in to, to making just enough power that this will work and not have any issues. And, you know, the goal then, like I say, is to get rid of that weight up front so then I can get rid of my sandbags out here and we don't need them. I mean, normally I have almost 600 pounds of bias in this thing. And if we can take out, you know, 100 pounds of bias out back from the 100 up front, that's not going to be a bad thing at all and drop our overall weight down and, and kind of get us going. But so that's uh, that's a little bit of the plans for the truck this year. And that's what we're going to start tearing into. I'll do some videos um, of the chair down as we're doing them and kind of just take you guys on that ride, and let you see what it's like. You know, say we're we're either uh, depending on how Uncle Sam goes, we're either going to be taking it to sick week or or maybe this. But maybe this either way I don't know but worst case we're trying to get ready for um, Corey's cash out race down at Darlington at the end of February so we got a little bit of work to do in in just about a month of time so a month month and a half but we're gonna kick ass and get it done and yeah take you on the ride with us